Babes Behind the Beats with just Bowen and Bowie Jane. Hello, it's Bowie Jane and Jess Bourne on Babes Behind the Beats. Welcome, everyone, to our amazing show. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Hi, Bowie. Yeah, that was uh, a new intro I just developed. I like that. Yeah. Welcome, everyone, to the best show you will ever listen to <laughs> yeah. in your entire lives. Yep, that's right. Believe everything we say. <laughs> oh, my God, yep. Hey, we have Kelsey Carter on the show today, which I'm super excited about. So excited. Yeah, and she's from... From New Zealand, but she lives in LA, and which got us talking about traveling. Yes, and we really were talking about eating while <laughs> traveling. Well, I because, think we were hungry when we had this conversation. Yeah. Well, it just reminded me because even the other day I was thinking about this. I don't even know if you would know this specifically, but because I've traveled so much on the East Coast, like on tour, there's two places that I love, and they're like these gas stations. They have made to order food, oh. and they're called Wawa. And sheets. Never heard of it. Sheets with a Z. Okay, so not kidding you. For anyone here who knows of this, so anyone here who's from the East Coast or tours all the time and goes to these places, it's one of those things that I look forward to having on tour. And it's so funny because it's literally like going to a gas station. But they just have these made to order. You go up to like the counter and push these buttons and you pick what you want. So there's like sandwiches, french fries, there's wraps, there's like chicken nuggets and chicken tenders, stuff like that. Is it healthy or not really? Not at all. But Actually, when we drove back from you, Utah, or maybe it was in Arizona or something. They had something at the stops which was my daughter. A lot of different gas stations do this. I mean, even for other people maybe here that would know this that are from Texas, there's a place called Bucky. And Bucky's is this, again, like the most massive, massive truck stop in the country. I mean, honestly, in the world that I've seen, to be honest with you. It's a gas station, but you go in there and it's, it's also like a grocery store. Yeah. They've got clothing. They've got an area that has gifts. It's just like you walk in and you're in awe. I have a Bucky's hat that oh I bought from there, actually. God. Actually, because when we're driving in all these gas stations, we're like, we don't know what the main brands are. And one of them was called Love's. Yeah, Love's. Yeah, but we were like, oh, that sounds like a nice homely place. And then we realized it's like a chain. <laughs> <laughs> Love's, Flying J, um, what else? Those are like major truck stops that you always stop at when you're on tour, especially. Oh. And, and when you're on a bus tour, too, because those are the best places to stop to get gas. Yeah, so what were you doing for food on a bus? I guess you've got sort of a microwave or something. Here. Yeah, well, yeah, so on the bus... You've got a microwave. That's pretty much your only. You don't have. Other than that, you don't have many options. But I'm trying to think of like the the the, my go to meals. I would always get the rice. I think it's called like Uncle Ben's rice packets, where you literally you just like tear a corner and then you put it in the microwave and you heat it up for like three minutes. Yeah, nice. And so I'd have rice and then I'd get like avocados. So I'd have like rice, avocado, and then some just pre made chicken or something from one of these places that you could just eat how it is. You don't have to worry about cooking it. It's already like pre cooked and all. So it's basically all on the go food. It's a lot of it's on the go, but I mean, you do go shopping for things like you can get cereal, things that you can just either oh, that's not true. need because we've got a fridge and a freezer on the bus yeah. as well. Frozen food, obviously, you just put in the microwave and then anything that's fresh you could eat if you wanted to get salad stuff, like you can get stuff to make salads. Granted, that's a little harder to do on a bus because you yeah. need to like cut some things up and stuff. So you're really trying to go for the pre-made kind of packaged things that's easy to just whip out of the fridge. And because I was mostly in hotels, we were doing the same thing, though. It's all to-go food. You just end up buying crap all the time, though. Well, that's the other thing. So if you're not on a bus, for instance, on the bus, you have the luxury of storing food, right? Yeah. But if you're doing a van tour or like a sprinter, you don't have storage, so you can't get things and be like, oh, I'll take this to go now. You probably end up going to fast food chains a lot more. It's like also because of timing wise, you're just picking something up and sometimes you just got to go, especially if you're not in a bus. If you're driving yourselves around the country, you don't have the time to stop and sit down and have like a nice meal. You're driving to the next city. Yeah. What about, um, what do you need before drumming actually? Oh, what do I eat? Yeah. Well, so here's the thing. It just depends because again, when you're on tour, like if I'm in Philly, I want a Philly (laughs) cheesesteak. You know, if I'm in Chicago, I'm like, get me a Chicago dog. But uh, so it's not like I'm eating healthy per se. Yeah. But what I have to do is eat at least, if I'm especially if I'm eating heavy, I have to eat at least two and a half hours before our set. Right. So like if we're on at 10 p.m., definitely by like 7 30, I'm like, gotta have. Oh, that's pretty early actually. Yeah. Yeah. I'm jumping up down. You don't want to vomit. But I mean, singing wise, yeah, you don't want to be like on the mic and having to like burp. burp. <laughs> No, you don't. As a drummer, it's fine for me. (laughs) What about Tessa and all the people you've toured with? 
Yeah. What are their habits with eating on tour? So I think it does vary with every different artist. Everyone has their favorite places. For Tessa specifically, her main focus on tour is finding good coffee shops. So our focus is in the morning uh. for food. Whereas for me, I'm more of, oh, I want a good dinner. Me too. Of course, everyone likes breakfast, but I'm also the type of person who could go a few hours without eating breakfast yeah. and still be fine. If we need to get on the road and they're like, hey, we can't stop for three hours, I'm not, I'm hangry. I'm going to fucking kill someone. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I'll take a nap until we get to where we're going to eat you know yeah yeah i always need something in my stomach but yeah i don't care much for breakfast well i do love a good breakfast but that wasn't my my uh you know choice but so with tessa she loves good coffee shops like loves like she doesn't want to do like the chain like this the like starbucks or coffee beans or anything like that she's well she would have liked europe then oh yeah yeah Yeah. and europe it was always like finding really good coffee did you ever do a writing house you know with their bands all staying together yeah, yeah, especially when we were recording. Yeah, we'd be staying in one space together. Yeah. But even then, you're ordering in food all the time. Yeah. You're ordering I know, a lot. it's so bad. I don't know how we don't get hugely fat. I mean, I go through <laughs> phases. I think... <laughs> Actually, when our band was on tour when I was 22, we went through a phase where we just wanted to eat Taco Bell all the time. Well, oh oh, here's the thing. I will say, because bless their hearts, Taco Bell sponsored us. Right. <laughs> How they, they do this thing where they, it's called Feed the Beat, and they give new artists all this money in Taco Bell cards. Oh my God, that is incredible. Yeah, and so that's what we had gotten. And so, of course, on tour, we had all this free <laughs> money to Taco Bell. So every day, it'd be like, Taco Bell, Taco Bell, Taco Bell. Oh and I was like, I God. don't fucking want to see a Taco Bell in my life ever again. Luckily, now I can eat it. I'm back to <laughs> loving Taco Bell. When we were eating it all the time, I just couldn't wow. do it. That's a good sponsorship. I mean, it was because, again, you want something that's kind of quick and easy and fast on the road to do. And, and especially because some of the guys in our band were vegetarian at uh, the time. Taco Bell's the only real fast food at the time that had anything that you could just make vegetarian. Oh, I didn't know Because you could that. just change the meat substitute it for rice and beans oh. you could get a chalupa with just instead of chicken like <laughs> rice and beans or whatever or like a quesadilla you know so yeah it's, it's different on tour but i do i love touring because you get to experience all these oh, places that yeah. you're like oh i'm going to that city i know i can only get this in that city i make a point to go there if you're in another country especially like in japan i'm like oh i'm only eating oh my God. sushi and ramen and udon yeah. while i'm here oh but i do like trying the chain restaurants bondi our producer he loves that too and he he insists on going to all the McDonald's in yes, every country. because it's so different. And yeah. in other countries, <laughs> it's they have way healthier options. And it doesn't taste as processed, I will say. Everything yeah, in other funny. countries seems way more fresh. Like you can get a nice chicken sandwich from McDonald's and I'm like, oh, I feel like I didn't eat too badly right now. <laughs> uh, so what about like since quarantine, have you been cooking? Because let me think. Well, I'm not the best cook actually. You don't cook very much, huh? Well, I just, yeah, I like easy options. Well, speaking of which, what I have been doing during quarantine especially, and this has been a lifesaver. It's been such a lifesaver. Um, HelloFresh. It's unbelievable. HelloFresh is incredible. Yeah. So if you're talking about wanting to save time, especially save the time and the stress of cooking, this is your option. Just the other day, I was in a pinch to get somewhere yeah. and I didn't have any time to go to the store or get the ingredients. And I was like, oh, thank God I have this HelloFresh. No, because it comes in the bag. It, yeah. It comes in little paper bags each meal and it's got one bell pepper, one, you know, so it's got exactly, it has exactly what, you need. what you need. Yeah. So that's what I mean about the saving the time and the stress. Yes, yeah, so you're not overbuying. You're not overbuying. You know overbuying. how you go, you you normally buy four bell peppers and you use one and throw three out. No. And they have the easy to follow recipes with the steps and the pictures. So yeah. it shows you exactly what to do. That's what I liked because it was, yes, yeah, step by step and me being a shit cook, really. Oh, I can yeah. cook this pasta. <laughs> I was like, oh, step one, chop the pepper. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so the other thing that's great about HelloFresh is that it's really flexible. So for instance, if you want to skip a week, you can literally skip a week right on the app. For some reason, you're like, oh, this week I, I know that I won't be home or something to yeah. cook this. You can just skip it. Which is perfect for you if you're going on tour. Exactly. And you can easily also change the delivery days for it and the meal preferences. So for instance, I'm not vegetarian, but my girlfriend is. So if for one week I want to do all vegetarian recipes that we can do with her, or if she's not here and I can do, you know, I want the meat options you can pick. Well, that's amazing. Yeah, it's really great. Well, the 
good thing is, because we love it so much, we have managed to score a discount code for everyone. So yes. It yes. is Beats90. So you just go on to the HelloFresh website and this is a really, really good offer. It's $90 off and free shipping. That's quite a You can't discount. beat that, guys. Nah. You just go to HelloFresh.com forward slash Beats90. And then you use the code BEATS90 that will get you $90 off. Yeah, that's actually shipping. a lot. Like, I love, I'm always listening for discount codes. I'm like, oh, there's one. Okay, cool. This is an incredible, like, you, you can't beat that. Yeah. You really can't. So, uh, yeah. So, if anyone's looking for that, please go check that out. It's amazing. It really is. It's delicious and nutritious. And it's, it's actually tasty like restaurant. It feels like restaurant flavors. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's it really what I is love. great. I loved cooking it the other day. I had so much fun cooking it. This is so much easier than having to, like, go go to the shops. What are you going to buddy order? And even getting uh. the measurements correct. I'm happy they give you everything perfectly set up. Yeah, it's so easy. It's super easy. Well, I don't know if Kelsey's tried HelloFresh, but I'm hey, sure we can get her onto her. it. We'll give her, <laughs> we'll give her our code. You know, so, she can have the code. Yeah, so she's like an amazing singer-songwriter from New Zealand. Um, she had a little bit of fame with the old Harry Styles video that she put up. Yes, she had tattooed his face yes onto her face yeah we'll ask her about that yeah we'll ask her about that and i think she's heading to the uk so i'm looking forward to chatting with her and yeah let's go to kelsey let's do it Hey, Kelsey, we are so excited to chat with you. Well, we've got someone from my neck of the woods, sort of. You're from New Zealand, and welcome to the show. Thank you so much, guys. I'm stoked to be here. Yeah. Yeah. Now, tell me, you grew up in New Zealand, and then you've moved to America at some point. How long have you been in Los Angeles for? Um, I've spent a lot of my life here. Part of my family is American, so I kind of grew up between New Zealand, America, and Australia and just kind of jumped around. There's never been like a real definite defining moment. I've always just kind of been shifting and moving. And I'm actually moving to England next week. So it's... Oh, my God. We're, we're continuing the trend. Oh, my gosh. That's pretty cool. Where are you going to be living in, in England? We love the UK. I'm going to London and just seeing what happens. Yeah, that's awesome. So I guess you didn't have visa issues if your family's from America, which is always an interest. <laughs> Being an Aussie, everyone's like, hey, what visa are you on? <laughs> but um, Yeah, definitely. And especially with like the election and stuff, you know, I get quite vocal with how about politics. Well, you're described self-proclaimed love child of Angelina Jolie and Mick Jagger, which <laughs> I mean, I looked at your, your photo and what an amazing that is it the missing person? Yeah, it's for missing person. I, I actually remember seeing these posters around LA and the first thing, because it was before I really knew you <laughs> at all and the first thing I thought was like, wow I was like, that kind of looks like Angelina Jolie but like more badass. <laughs> <laughs> you that can't get more badass than Angelina Jolie. Yeah, you've got an amazing look. And we listen to your music and it's freaking got a real attitude to it. I love it. It's a little bit different, but it's got elements of, I guess, rock and roll. And I really love it. You guys all have to go check out Kelsey's music. How did you get this direction? Have you always been into this style of music or how have you sort of gone into this style? Um, I mean, when you're like a young foreign person entering the industry, I just for a long time did what I was told and was conforming to what other people told me I should be or say or how I should sing it. And I was really miserable, especially because I pride myself on being an individual and, you know, having that strength of character. And I felt like everyone around you, you know, when you are that person, they think they know better. And you think that you've got to listen to these people who think they know better. And it got to the point where I was like, fuck this. I'm miserable. Like, I need to press reset and really dive into who I am and what I want to do and how how I want to do it. Rock and roll is my favorite genre of music. My biggest inspirations are a lot of, you know, rock artists from the 70s, 60s and 70s. And I wanted to just do it my way and see what happened. And I felt like every session I went into before this, it was like, we're going to make you the next Amy Winehouse. And I was like, well, I'm not. I'm not Amy Winehouse. I love Amy Winehouse, but like I'm not her. I'm Kelsey Carter. So it was a really awesome, cathartic thing for me to be like, fuck this. I'm doing it my way and let's make some rock music. So to make music your way, were you trying out different co-writes or were you literally writing it all yourself? Well, originally, yeah. I mean, I was doing co-writes with pop people and I mean, everyone. If you're a writer in the industry, I don't know if you know anything about, I know you guys are musicians, so I'm sure you know. You do co-writes with random people all the time. It says, oh, we'll set you up with this first 
person or this producer and right. this is what they've done or this it literally goes one of two ways for me anyway it's like it hits or it misses and mm. there's been sessions I've been in where I've literally 10 minutes in I know this is not going to work yeah right um and for me, a big part of songwriting is such a personal thing. Like, I don't take outside songs. I write everything that I put out. But I had to kind of find those core people yeah. that understood me and understood my perspective because everything's been said in music. And it's just about finding your own way to say it. And that was a huge thing for me. And luckily, I found the most amazing people to work with. And a lot of them are, are my best mates. And we've just kind of cultivated the sound together. Yeah, I think that actually ends up happening a lot of times in music it kind of seems that when you're writing with your friends it just makes it more fun and then the more authentic kind of sound comes out because you feel the most comfortable probably you know yeah and because lyrics are such a big part of it for me I'm sure if you guys have listened to the album those lyrics like those are my stories those are the real stories the real things that have happened to me or, or been inside my head and even though I truly believe in songwriting melody is probably the most important thing but for me for my own like process and therapy behind it and, and loving what I do poetry Poetry and lyrics is such a big part of it for me. So not having like my best mates write the music with me who know me and understand me and that's what makes it, I think. Oh, yeah, when making you sure. Someone you've just met, it's like, oh, you don't know me, you don't know what I want to say and it gets a bit more mechanical, which I hate. For sure, for so sure. So true. And what about producer-wise? Obviously, you want to get a particular sound happening. So how did you find the producer that you're working with? Well, I've got kind of, on this record, I've got three or four groups of people that I wrote and produced this with. Half the album was done with my best friend, actually, his name's Michael Morgan, and he has been in my life for about, we've been best mates for like six years, and we have been through this whole process together. He's seen me and helped me through my lowest and, and shared the highest with me. It was basically just trial and error for us. We just kind of went in and, all right, let's listen to the records that we love and what how I want this to sound, and then let's basically come up with a mood board, an audio mood board for what we want it to be and go from there. And then I worked with, on a lot of the songs, a guy called Chris Criati and Zach Savini. Oh, yeah. And these guys are fucking amazing. They've done all of Youngblood stuff, Poppy. Um, they're both incredible. And the thing is, my a huge part objective for me is to have a new brand of rock and roll. And both of them, are, they're rock guys. You know, Chris looks like he's straight out of Van Halen and Zach is just like this sonic genius. And it's just a really good pairing. Like the three of us have come up with some of my favorite music that's out and then also not out yet and then i wrote a couple of songs with these guys alex reed and rob persuade both british guys and a lot of the music i've done with them has been i've literally walked into the studio and had a story to tell them and then we've written that song that literally happens every time we have a session which is which is awesome <laughs> that's um, great but yeah they're all they're all great dudes did you have this album pretty much done before quarantine started or was this a product of quarantine no 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 this is all done before quarantine all like, done okay oh my god I was so grateful like when quarantine happened I had two music videos shot and ready oh. and the whole album finished oh. and I remember just being like thank fucking god great because- otherwise you'd be doing those zoom videos that everyone's been doing like well, they all look the same that's why I was asking because I didn't know if you were doing yeah. those zoom sessions to finish the album or whatever you know like that people have had to do which I'm sure you probably did a lot of zoom sessions over quarantine as well right yeah yeah I hate them more than life itself yeah they sound <laughs> awful <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like let's just get COVID guys let's just get together <laughs> and get COVID. Let's get in the room together and just do this thing. Let's just yeah. accept that that's what we need to do. Music bubble. <laughs> You're signed to BMG. That's massive. How did that happen? What was the process? Did someone introduce you? Was it? Did you have a manager first? Like, what was the process? Kind of a cool, actually, a cool kind of story with that because I became friends with the Struts and then I ended up going on tour with them and then I ended up falling in love with the guitarist but there was somebody on their team at Interscope that I had become friends with and he worked at Interscope and so he was around their crew all the time you know I was around and we became friends and then I was opening for the Struts at the Wilton in in Los Angeles and he had texted me and he was like Kels can you come up to the dressing room and I went up to my dressing room and he was there and he had told me that he actually had left Interscope and was over at BMG and he said I'd love to bring you in to BMG to meet everyone so a couple months later I went in and had a meeting with the BMG peeps and I ended up being his first signing over at BMG wow wow that's amazing yeah Wow, you must yeah, have been so damn story. excited. Like, you've been in the music industry for a while, so exciting stuff. Yeah, very exciting. We had a lot of offers after the Harry Styles thing that I did. Oh, right. And 
there was a lot of like it was a roller coaster. That whole time was a huge roller coaster. And actually, we'll just um, um, Jess was going to ask about that. Yeah, because publicity wise, you obviously gained so 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 much traction from doing that. So, did you come up with that on your own? Was that just like your idea to be like, I want to do this and then see what happens? Actually, just to explain what this was, Kelsey got a tattoo allegedly on her face, which was Harry Styles, and it turns out to be a publicity stunt. It was a fake tattoo, but she got a heap of press out of it. All right, go Kelsey. <laughs> so it was not my idea. I had written the song during a very dark time in my life and I was working with these guys, Tony Astley and Anthony Raffamundo, both incredible writers and producers. And I went in, I just said to them, guys, I don't want to write another sad song. I was in a very depressed time. And and was like, well, Harry Styles is, that, is your lock screen. Let's write a song about him. So honestly, just a fun session. We didn't, I didn't think anything was going to come of it. And then my management at the time was obsessed with the song. And it was kind of my convincing everyone that like rock music was my calling, you know? And we ended up just sitting on it for six months and then Harry's birthday was coming up and I said to the, the, my managers, the guys, uh, well, my managers, guys, let's come up with something cool to go with the Harry song. If we're going to release it, like, let's let's think of something that we can help launch it, you know? And one of them, one of my managers, who is the most outlandish, uh, incredibly bold human being, he said, Kels will be down to do this. And they called me in and he told me the idea. Oh, my God. <laughs> and I'm going to be like, so scared. I was like, no, not at all. I was like, yeah, let's do it. Because I didn't think it was going to work. I was really? Like, I didn't care about that. Really? <laughs> no, and it's yeah. like, and then then when it was exploding, were you like, oh shit? Yeah, were you just was your mind blown? It got huge. It was huge. Yeah, yeah. And the big thing for me was that like we spent about three weeks planning because everything was timed. Every little like movement through that whole release phase, we had everything scheduled and obviously lots of moving parts that we had to figure out. And all of that was such a fun experience. Just being a part of that whole month of chaos. I'm built for that shit so it was really <laughs> awesome and then when it started blowing up like my mates were staying with me at the time my two girlfriends and we couldn't sleep like I had to take an ambient to go to bed because <laughs> the anxiety that I had I was just like what the fuck's going on oh my god oh my god and I was just not eating I was just chain smoking the jewel it was just horrible <laughs> I, didn't, you know, I didn't know what was going to come I didn't know what was going to happen and then I got mad, massively trolled and bullied online and Ugh. that was a huge thing that I'd never experienced. So it was a bit of a shocking thing, which at that point I just didn't look at my phone. But that was just the period between the tattoo photo coming out before the song came out. Because there was a good 36 hours where it was just the tattoo. It was just the photo. Oh. Right. And then once the song came out and Billboard like announced the song, that's when the hate started to like turn into, oh, wait, this is for her song. And then when I announced that it wasn't real, that's when like shifted even more and people weren't as nasty. But honestly, like it created the conversation and that was the whole point. So Yeah, yeah, exactly. It did that. So and then my question is, did that translate for you into actual listeners? Did you notice that obviously your streaming numbers were like bigger after doing oh, yeah. that? Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean streaming numbers, social numbers, all of that and essentially got me like my core fan base and those core fans really took to certain things about me and my music and I've just dived headfirst since then into those things and and my relationship with them. And right. Yeah, it's gone yeah, well. Yeah, you, you have a great relationship with your fans, it seems, which is so important these days. I mean, you really have to be hands-on with the fans. I mean, it's like a, it's a relationship. And I think a lot of artists don't understand that these days. So I've noticed that you have a really great relationship and you can just see that through your social media and everything that you're doing. So that's amazing. My question actually also about Harry. So why was that song not on the album? Well, the sound definitely evolved from yeah. that. You know, sonically, it was definitely more of kind of a 60s, poppier kind of rock. For sure. And I wanted to marry musical theatre and punk. That's kind of my, was my goal for my album. Yeah. And I don't know, that song just didn't fit into the narrative of Missing Person. It was kind of its own thing as well. And I felt like it was better to live on its own. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, you literally just released this album, but you had this done before quarantine. So you've obviously been working on some new stuff. Like, are you just gonna be pushing singles right now? You think from the album and for a little bit, guys? I'm already like halfway through album two. I'm, I'm wow. so <laughs> eager to get it out. That's yeah, so I'm, exciting. Like, yes. The thing about Missing Person was it was an accumulation of songs over two and a half years. And when I first started writing, the first song we wrote on it was God Knows I've Tried, but with no anticipation for an 
album. I was just writing songs at that point. And I want this next album to be like, sit down, map it out. I'm such a scatterbrain. And that's how this Missing Persons record came to fruition is through that. I want to do this next one a little bit more consolidated and like planned. And so, yeah, we've already kind of gone head first over the last couple of months. And I'm going to go to England and finish it, essentially. Wow. So, so just cool. released Missing Person already halfway through album number two. You're just a machine. You're just a writing machine. <laughs> well, in the normal world, I'd be on tour. Right, yeah? true. And we can't do that right now. So it's, I'll just write more music, I guess, because we can't tour. So real quick, with that being said, did you have some tours lined up then for this year that obviously got canceled? Yeah, we were supposed to release the record um, end of May, June. And then we were supposed to have a summer tour and continue touring over the right. course of the, the year. It wasn't announced yet, obviously, but when quarantine ended up happening, it, everything just kind of got put on hold and pushed. And my yeah. bass player got stuck in England and oh. was like all these different things that came. And it was like, okay, do we wait till next year to even release the album? And I fully vetoed that fucking suggestion. So yeah. I was like, no. And then let's put this shit out. But yeah. nothing to do. Let me sit at home and talk to my fans and like give them this album so that we can just move on to the next one. Right. A lot of this record was so such a, from a dark place for me that releasing it was also like a selfish thing for me because I needed the weight off my shoulders. I needed to move on from it. Yeah, you're like, bye. Is, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, get it out. Get, it's yours now, guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you deal with it. You cry. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, man. So, so again, with that being said, anything on, like, do you have any idea if you're going to be on tour next year at all or is that all still just probably like TBD. The second that we're allowed to tour again, we will be on tour. I think I've like burnt off everyone in my life on my team's ears over the fact that, guys, the second, the second we can be on tour, this guy's when's tour coming back every day. It's, just, <laughs> it's my favorite thing in the world to do. Oh, for sure. Um, how about I did get new management about two months ago and so it's new for her. So I have like a new person to, to nag about tour. <laughs> there you go. So, <laughs> so you're like, anyway, back to her. And she's like, oh, wait, you've yeah. Yeah. asked that today. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, we both love being on tour. We've both lost all our gigs as well. We started the podcast and we're still going. We're quite liking it, actually. Yeah, yeah. I'm used yeah. to my happy hey, place. You can always do that on the road when it comes back. That's exactly. what we say. We've got mics that we plug in and off we go. And Jess yep. is constantly yep. touring as a drummer, so um, we're going to have to do it that way. Yeah, we'll do it that way, but oh, I yeah. miss it. It's my it's my like happy place is being on tour. So right yeah. now in the world, I just feel so lost, to be honest. <laughs> So I'm exactly the same way. Like moving to England is going to like scratch that itch a little bit because I'm going to be in a new surrounding. But yeah, yeah, totally. Lucky you, you get to go to England. Maybe I just need to make the move to England too. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm coming then. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, Kelsey, we just wanted to say thank you so, so much for doing this interview. You're amazing. We're so stoked on your new album. Uh, for anyone who hasn't heard oh, it, thank you. You, yes, for anyone who hasn't heard it yet, go listen to Missing Person by Kelsey Carter. Check it out on Spotify, Apple, any streaming platforms. And then, Kelsey, for anyone who is not following you and would like to follow you and keep up with all the awesome stuff you're doing, could you give us your social media handle so everyone can uh, check you out? Yes, uh, I am at Kelsey Carter on everything. K-E-L-S-Y K-A-R-T-E-R and for the Americans who can't understand me, it's Kelsey Carter. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know the feeling. Wow, <laughs> I love that. Yeah. <laughs> and also, I can only do that full-blown American accent. I can't do a normal I'm like, oh yeah. Like. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> that Valley Girl vibe. Yeah, or Southern. I can do a bit of Southern. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. Well, thanks so much. We are going to be posting all about you on our socials as well. So um, we'll let you know when the interview's hey. coming out. And yeah. yeah, thanks again. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you.